This is two more days he is to drill. Again, being a nice Orthodox Jew, I said to the Lord God, no, I'm stubborn. I said, I won't tell him. He said, tell Moses to strike the rock a second time. Well, that was too much for me. When God put it in the language of the Torah, I had to tell Moses to strike the rock again. So I said, Moses, the Lord God told me that you should work two more days, please, for my sake, if not for his sake, give me two more days of work and work until Yom Hamishi, Thursday. This was Tuesday. He said, Simcha, you know what? Because we're old friends, I'll give you two more days. But don't have any hope whatsoever because it's dry. No water. I'll give you two days and then we'll go home and finish. I said, okay. Now, let me tell you about Thursday. The two days later. That day is the worst day in the Jewish calendar. If there's a bad day in the Jewish calendar, this is the worst. And that day is called Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of the month of Av. What happened on that day? The first temple was destroyed on that day. The second temple was destroyed on that day. The Spanish Inquisition forced us to leave Spain and to wander throughout Europe on that day. The First World War broke out on that day. How did it all begin? The spies back who went into the land way back 3,500 years ago came back out of the land and said to Moses, Eretz Ochelet Yoshvea, it's a land that eats up its, its inhabitants. We will not go in. And from that day, we cried all night long. And the Lord God said, if you cry over a good gift that I give you, the land of Israel, then I'm going to give you something to cry about on this day throughout your ages. And always on the ninth of Av, we have cried and cried and cried. But the, the Lord God left us with one more tradition. He said, in the end of days, on that day, I will give you a major sign that the Mashiach is coming. Ah, wonderful. But who can wait till the end of days? Well, that was the day, the 9th of Av. It's in August. In August, the, high, the, the highest temperatures, it's 52, 55 degrees Celsius. Burning, burning hot. And believe me, it's a day that you, you have to fast. We fast, we don't eat, we don't drink. We cover our, our heads with sackcloth and ashes. We cry. We ask God to forgive us our sins and to bring us back again the Holy Temple and the Holy Messiah. On that day, in the afternoon, Moshe again came and knocked on my door. By that time, I was already weak from fasting and from hunger and from thirst. It was a hot day. It was terrible. He said, come quickly. We have a, we have a situation I can't control. I said to him, Moshe, 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 what's the problem? Two days ago, you didn't have any water. Today, you have less water. What's the problem? What do you want from me? He said, I can't tell you. You have to look at it. And Moshe is usually a very calm man, not like me. And he said, you have to come. And he pulled me by the arm, took me into his car, and we drove out four and a half, five kilometers to this place. And when we got a half a kilometer away, I saw something that my eyes saw, but my heart and my brain didn't want to believe. I saw a column of water that was this round coming up out of the ground and Hallelujah. into the sky. And I couldn't tell the difference from where the sky began and the water ended, or the water began and the sky ended. I didn't know one from the other. It was an amazing sight. And I said to Moses, please tell me what's your problem? What happened here? He says, all right, I'll tell you from the beginning. We were drilling. And at two o'clock in the afternoon, still no water. And I told my people, my crew, I said to them, everyone, stop the engines, get ready to go home. We're all finished here. No sooner had the words left my mouth than the drill went down into the ground. And before I could say another word, it came back out again. And when it came back out, it came back out with all this water. And it blew out all my equipment from the hole. And my problem is I can't stop it. <laughs> I said to him, Moshe, you have discovered the waters of creation. 
You've discovered the waters of Miriam's well that disappeared in the wilderness of Tzin here. These are the waters God has been waiting for to show us that the Mashiach, Yeshua, is coming. He said, Simcha, I think you're crazy, but I think we're all going crazy too. We came to the water, and there were 15 to 20 workmen, all dirty, down in their underwear. They had grease and oil, and they were sweating. It was terrible, but they were all covered with water. And I looked at them, and I said, Boach Hashem, praise the Lord. And they looked at me, and they said, Boach Hashem. And we grabbed each other, and we danced like maniacs. If you ever want to see 25 maniacs dancing around, Jewish maniacs, it's worse, dancing around the water over and over again and saying, Mayim, Mayim li Yeshua, water, water for Yeshua. That's what we saw here. That's what we did here. We cried and we praised the Lord and we danced and we praised the Lord and we shouted unto the Lord the, the, the words of salvation. And then people began to come here. The, the geologists, the hydrogeologists came. And what happened? As they came, as they came, they checked the water, which had now gone down to 1,700 meters. And when they drilled all the way down to 1,700 meters, more water and more water, there's no end to the basin, to the bottom. And they found more and more water. And finally, what did they say? It is indeed, they said, Mebria, the waters of creation. Now, Hebrew is a funny language because the word Bria, which means creation, also means health, briut, health. So it's the waters of life-giving health. And what happened? Isaiah 35 again says, The lame man will leap as a gazelle, the blind will see, the deaf shall hear, the weak heart will be strengthened, the shaky hands and the shaky knees will be strong again from the water that will leap out of the ground. And people began to come from all over Israel. The television and the radio and the newspaper reporters, of course. But then followed Am Yisrael, the general people of Israel. And they were healed of all their sicknesses, cancer, leukemia, all the terrible diseases that are known to mankind that have come through our terrible sins were being healed by this water. And it was, became known throughout Israel and then throughout the rest of the world. And people have come here since. And the waters have not stopped flowing for 10 years. And it's for that reason I've told this story. It's not a story that has no meaning. It's not a story that's just an empty story. It's a story that says, have faith. These are the waters that tell you that our Lord God will come and the ransomed of the Lord will return to Zion with songs and everlasting joy in their hearts. And we will see, we will see, ayin ba'ayin, eye to eye, the return of the Lord God in Yeshua HaMashiach. May God make you happy and rejoice in what you hear and in what you see. Amen.